Don't waste your dad's money on porn. That's the crux of this video. The entirety of his father's life savings that he had saved up from working as a pharmacist for over 30 years was gone. He had spent $60,000 from his brother's credit card and had also taken a $65,000 loan out on the house. When his <laughs> What a f***ing asshole! I mean, f***ing A! Like, he try and use things and word things to make me feel guilty so that I would- Yes, yeah, son, I really hate that you spent $275,000 on a fake girlfriend. <laughs> And now I got nothing to retire on? You know, I mean, it's not what it used to be, is all I can say. <laughs> it's now that I've killed my financial source, it's really, you know, it just, it's a, the sparks just aren't there. What do I like to do? I like to watch anime. What is it? What kind of anime? Hentai? <laughs> One of the conditions was that he cease all communication with Sylvia immediately, but it... But she loves me. She loves me. Grant should have been punched in the f***ing throat. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. But who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self-snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, and guess who I am? I am your personal, board-certified criminal defense lawyer to give you all the kind of content, and I actually do practice law. That's how I became board certified, trying cases. Today we're going to react to a JCS video that was recommended to us by Drew on the gram. And behind the camera, as always, is our content genius, Michael Rivers, curator of all the content here on CLR, Criminal Lawyer Reacts. But before we get to that, this is brought to you by eForms.com. eForms.com is a very effective way to get something done that you need to get done so you don't have to hire a lawyer save your money. For example, my grandmother, she bought a crotch rocket. She's very fast on the motorcycle, but she doesn't really adhere to the safety protocols. But what she did was she bought one and she was able to use eForms.com to sign a bill of sale. The seller had that. So you go to eForms.com and whether it's a bill of sale or power of attorney, we have power of attorney over grandma. So guess what? After she bought this motorcycle, we had to sell it again. So I did the eForms power of attorney with her, you know, got that done. But then we had to sell the bike because grandma really can't ride a crowd tracker. She thinks she can. But anyway, if you need a document, like a business agreement, any kind of form, power of attorney, bill of sale, rental agreement. You don't pay a guy like me. You go to eForms.com. You can save yourself a ton of money. And guess what? Grandma, don't be buying motorcycles like that because grandma's not supposed to be riding. You can ride on the back. You can ride on the back of mine, grandma. Okay? The title of this video, and this is a JCS video. We love JCS, so make sure you give him some love as well. Son spends $275,000 of dad's money on virtual girlfriend. Let's just kind of, and I, I haven't seen this, so grab some wine. It's a little bit longer one. So grab a little cocktail, grab a, a bowl of popcorn, and let's get in, to it. In mid-2018, 29-year-old Grant was unemployed, living rent-free in his parents' guest house in the rural village of Chuliota, Florida. He had not once lived... Okay, living rent-free in somebody's basement. Now, you, grandma's gets a pass, right? Because, you know, she's grandma. But a young guy like that... I mean, no. ...lived on his own and had recently been kicked out of an anesthesiology school for lack of attendance and also fired from a job as a nurse for stealing medication. It was he sounds like a catch, ladies. It was around that time when he decided to experiment with the relatively new realm of online cam sites. These platforms differ from regular porn sites in that they are interactive. Instead of watching a pre-recorded video, users can solicit live performances from models in exchange for money. This allows... It Dudes, do you know how much free porn is out there? I mean, there's just fucking ton of free porn. So, don't waste your dad's money on porn. That's the crux of this video. This allows individuals to watch whatever acts they want, but at a price. Using his brother's credit card, he browsed through multiple... He's a handsome fella, don't you think? Look at those teeth. ...cam models spending an average of 20 minutes on each one. Yet it was on the 5th of June when forensics discovered he came in contact with a performer who went by the stage name of Sylvie. And over the following six months, Grant would spend over $200,000 of his family's money on this one model. The entire... Okay. The definition of the word loser is somebody who would spend 200 grand. I mean, you could fucking buy somebody from the Philippines for that. 
I mean, fucking hey. I mean, for a lot less, actually. <laughs> Not really advocating that you do that. I just think it's stupid. And But it, it, it really shows you these are isolated crimes of compulsion, right? I mean, I can't believe he didn't wear his fucking wiener out for $275,000. The entirety of his father's life savings that he had saved up from working as a pharmacist for over 30 years was gone. He had spent $60,000 from his brother's credit card and had also taken a $65,000 loan out on the house. When his <laughs> What a fucking asshole! I mean, fucking A! What are you doing? You know, I mean, that's all he's doing is, is getting on this site and uh, doing it. But what, uh, you know, and we see this all the time, and whether it's you know, jerking it like this guy, or if it's uh, drugs or whatever, y you see this compulsive behavior all the time. Family found out, instead of calling the police, Grant was sent to a behavioral rehabilitation facility for online- Grant should have been punching the fucking throat. Porn addiction. The more we try to run from shame, the stronger it becomes. When Grant got back from rehab on January 4th, his father presented him with a two-page list of rules he was required to follow if he wanted to continue living at home. One Actually, I wouldn't allow him to live at home after he did all that shit. Get the fuck out of my house. I have a relationship. I see you at Easter and Christmas, and until you can demonstrate some uh, level of trust, whether it's heroin or porn or whatever, when you get into these addictive cycles, you cannot trust somebody at, until... I don't think you ever really can. I mean, you have to really be careful. You have to really be careful. One of the conditions was that he cease all communication with Sylvia immediately, but it... But she loves me. She loves me. Give me a break. And that's... These, these sites, like, we have saw that with Andrew Tate, they prey on, on these weak people. It took just three weeks for the family to discover that he had broken the contract and reestablished... Three weeks. Big fucking surprise contact with the model via Twitter. On January 24th, when Chad Amato got home from work, he reportedly confronted Grant over his disregard, and the two of them got into a heated argument which almost turned into a physical altercation. Grant was then kicked out of the house, and for the first time in his life, he was on his own. Shortly before 9 a.m. the next morning, police received a call from Cody Amato's girlfriend alerting them that he had failed to show up to work that morning and hadn't responded to multiple phone calls. They arrived at the residence at 9.17 a.m., and once knocks on the front door went unanswered, they were able to gain access with a knife via the back entrance. Chad, Margaret, and Cody Amato were all found lying dead on the floor with gunshot wounds to the head from a 9mm handgun. Grant became the immediate prime suspect, as a witness statement from Cody's girlfriend advised police of the confrontation that had occurred the night before, as well as the- Think about that. His addiction to porn was so fucking bad that he had to kill his family because he was so distraught over not being able to see Sylvie. That is just diabolical, and it's at a level that is just hard to even fathom. Obviously, the death of his family is is a symptom of other things but how could you do that you know it's just you're so gone i mean he was just absolutely he's not there collection of bizarre circumstances that had led to that point he was traced to a hotel in orlando if you're being cooperative sir we appreciate that yes, um, some similar kind of detectives want to talk to you so we're going to get nothing, their handcuffs off of nothing you. in your pants correct it's just a normal routine where we encounter someone that yes, we sir. want to make sure you're safe no, now we know you don't have any weapons we'll We'll get those restraints off, honey. We're confident you've been cooperative. Everything's good, so we appreciate that very much. Goes a long way. He immediately agreed to accompany them to the police station and sit down for an interview. Reports stated that he wasn't made aware of his family's demise, nor was he advised as to what the purpose of the interview was for. Grant himself didn't once inquire, just reportedly sat silent in the back seat of an unmarked police car, staring out the window for the entire journey to the police station. Get you another water there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So a lot of these crimes of compulsion like this are born out of isolation and low self-esteem, clearly, right? I've had clients who have done similar things. I mean, not, not the triple homicide part of it, but, you know, trafficking and whatever and, and just seeing prostitutes till no end and, and, and till your ultimate demise. Can I tell you something, guys? There's a woman out there for everybody, everybody. 
everybody, everybody, you don't have to do this shit. You don't have to go online. And if you do, there's plenty of free porn out there. But taking things out on people like this, it just never ceases to amaze me. One of the tactics that they use is letting you sit in a room by yourself, hoping you'll st you'll make some kind of statement, and they're not really eliciting anything. Although, what, and so, what's the first thing when you're in custody and there's an interrogation? It invokes Miranda. You know, the you have a right to a lawyer, that kind of thing. I'm here. <laughs> Just to restate, he has not been told nor given any insinuation as to why he is sitting inside an interrogation room and has not once inquired himself. Hey, we really appreciate you coming up here with us. And uh, you know, any time during this you need to stop and go to the bathroom, want a drink, um, snacks, saying just let me know and we'll be, we'll be happy to take Um <laughs> My name is Danny Anderson, and uh, I'm a deputy Simo County Sheriff's Office at Eva. The investigator's initial plan is to establish a friendly connection with the suspect, which can often be a highly effective tactical procedure to elicit a more detailed discourse. Yet on this occasion, something seems to get lost in the endeavor, which you'll just have to see for yourself when the time comes. This is one of the most fascinatingly aggravating interrogations to ever be released into the public domain. Um, so we just want to talk to you a little bit, and we'll get this in and out, be on our way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, full name. My uh, full name is Grant Tiernan Amato. What? What is there any special uh, nursing degree? What you do, or? Uh, I mean, I, I have like other certifications. Uh -huh. um, but uh, I mean, with that, like, I primarily worked in the hospital for I think five years, five or six years. Well, I had I was accused of grand theft for the third degree back in. June of 2018. There was no evidence ever ever presented. All the charges were dropped. Mm -hmm. I had been applying for jobs for the last couple weeks. I'd gotten a, like three or four callbacks, mm -hmm. um, and then I went on a job interview yesterday for a home infusion nurse job. What time was your interview yesterday? Uh, it was scheduled for 10. I got there at around 9 okay. in the morning, uh, and then I think we actually had the interview about. So. If you read what it said there, he said he went there at 9. His interview was at 10. Why would you show up an hour early? And then they did the interview at 9.45. Family was already dead at that point. I had the interview at about 9.45. How'd that go? I mean, it was all good. Uh, they didn't have anything. They said that they'd probably be getting back to me by Tuesday or Thursday uh -huh. this coming week. Get you back to work? Yeah. yeah cause One of the things that you'll find with people um, who have a very hardcore addiction whether it's something like this or whatever, it destroys their lives. And they lie, they lie, they lie, and it's everybody else's fault, not your own. And they have very little introspection. I mean, it's, like, it's a crappy world when you, know, you don't have any money and sure. you can't know, do anything. So. Financially, how, how's the, the nursing what you did? I'm sorry, I just don't know that much. She knows a lot more about nursing. The nursing, how, do, how does it pay? How's it pay? Um, I mean, if you work your your standard three to three twelve hours a week, you get anywhere between I'd say forty five and fifty five thousand dollars a year. So okay. I mean, it's not bad. I think my best year I, I made like fifty five thousand. Fifty five. Because I rarely worked overtime. Right. You know, and I was just because I I had the whole plan of going to uh to graduate school, mm -hmm. so I was just kind of using it as a stepping stone right. for that time. Just to pay the bills. To right. You, where you gotta yeah. gotcha. Um, and that and that and what you're going for, what does that pay? Nurse anesthesia pays. I mean, base, like, about 150 mm -hmm. up to 175 Now, a nurse anesthetist, they can make a really good money. But keep in mind, he was kicked out of uh, that school. Okay. Um, high school, where'd you go? I went to Timber Creek. How were you great? Um, high school in the first two years of college, I was A, B, C. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was in... Honors in the major program for uh, UCF. Mm -hmm. um, girlfriends. Girlfriends. I have... Girlfriends. Well, I have this online Sylvie that she's so fucking hot, and she loves me, but I just never met her in person. 
like my high school sweetheart uh, girlfriend um, for about five years. And then ever since then, no, like, official girlfriends, no flings or anything like that. Dates here and there? Dates occasionally, but, mm-hmm. I mean, not really. Kind of focused on, like, just getting through the life the life goals that, you know, I wanted to achieve. What do you like to do? What do I like to do? I like to watch anime. What kind of anime? Hentai? <laughs> I mean... What is it? I'm sorry. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. No, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I mean... I thought you said MMA. I'm uh, like, okay. And then, then when you start explaining to it... I mean, I, I guess it, like, no. it's it's animated. Um, it's like cartoons, I guess you could say, but it's Japanese cartoons. It is in Japanese, and then they uh, subtitle it. Yeah. You speak Japanese? I was gonna say, do you understand? I don't. <laughs> I, I understand a few words. We actually just went to uh, me, and my brother, and one of my friends. And my dead dad. Or I guess friends from high school. We went to Japan. In fact, how long have you been out of work? I've been out of work for six months, since June. How did you pay, that's a lot of money for to be out of work. My brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the only other game that we really played was Fortnite, but then that was starting to get to, like... That's a big deal right now. Man, yeah. The young kids are all over it. You know, I have, when I was raising my, our content genius, Michael Rivers, when I was raising my son, I never let him really play a whole lot of video games. And, you know, and maybe... And, and I think it stems from the fact that I think you get isolated. I'd rather have you outside playing whatever. And I, I remember when I was in, because I, I love video games. I fucking love, love, love video games. And I was in law school, and I played the game Doom so much that I just like I had to just break the CD and just I, get rid of it because it was just taking me away from whatever. And I think people who are just so into isolation. And I'm not going to just say video games, but just so into that isolation, they, it, it just that isolation destroys your life. I had one client contact where he was living at home with his parents. It, the idea was, and all he did was play video games and smoke weed. That's all he did. And he had this plan to uh, open up a hashish shop in, I don't know, in Holland or whatever, Netherlands. The idea was I'm kill my parents, and then th- then I'll get the inheritance. How fucking stupid is that? He kills mom, and then dad's coming around the corner, and uh, dad jumps out the window, and dad survives. Well, it looks like you're not getting any money, and then he winds up getting a life. I just, but they they have such a fucked up view of reality, and that's what happens here. And and actually, yeah, during the time that I was um that I wasn't working as a nurse, I tried to do the whole Twitch streaming thing. What is that? Um, I'm, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, We have to explain a lot of this to us? With, uh, with Twitch, it's you got your mic, and then you have your face cam, and then you, basically people are just watching you play whatever game you're going to say that you're playing. Okay. On virtual reality, it was primarily just Beat Saber, so it's like a, a rhythm-based game, like Guitar Hero. Apart from that, uh, we really didn't get into too many other games yet because we were kind of just focused on Beat Saber. Mm-hmm. But I think we had downloaded a few other where it's just like you're going through like a world and you can interact with the world or something like that. Close to you. How about interacting with the world? <laughs> I mean, you know, and I know that's popular and it's popular to do Twitch and the gaming and all that kind of stuff. But get the hell out there. You know, that can't be just your life. Brother Cody, let's talk about Cody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Cody. Who's older, you or him? He is. I'm the youngest one. I'm 29, he's 31. Okay. My oldest brother, Jason, is 35 or 36 now. Uh-huh. Talk about Cody. Cody. You know, we decided to go to nursing school together. We decided to go to the, the nurse anesthesia school together. A lot of people thought that it was weird because we did everything together and because we were so close, mm-hmm. but, yeah, I mean. Yeah, a lot of people understand the bond of brothers. Though. Yeah. The true bond if you're close to your And, I mean, during, like, this whole time, I mean, kind of like with just a few examples I've given you, I mean, he was, he'd take care of everything. For always me. there for you. Yeah. So we have, we're 45 minutes into the interview. They haven't talked one bit about why they're there. And he's just, he's just calm, cool, and collected. He's just, they're talking about, you know, his life. You would think that he would say, okay, enough about me. Why the fuck are we here at some point? Always there to support you. Always there. Yeah, did everything together, connected at the hip. Any, um, ever any issues really with him? 
No, like I was saying, during this last six months, it, it had been a very trying time. He would, like, have his moments where he would get extremely upset. Like, uh, like you know, he never gets violent, I guess you could say. But, like, at one point he got so upset that he, like, pushed a cabinet and then it, like, dented into the wall. Yeah, I mean, at least with me, he's always been, like, where he's he's there for me. Like, whatever it takes, regardless of what's happening, I'm going to take care of it for you. I got your mom. My mom has, uh... It must have been a bizarre sight for the detectives to witness when a man who had just allegedly shot his mother in the back of the head gave a reminiscent smile when she was brought up in the discussion. She's always been the, uh, it's kind of like Cody, she's always been the one that focused on me. And, um... Well, let's just say there was a lot to fucking focus on. Wait, were you the baby? You tr yeah. were truly the family baby? For my mom. For yeah. my chief. Yeah. Okay. For my mom. <laughs> Um, Mom favorite. Yeah. You know, countless times my dad would, like, come up to me and he'd make, like, me feel, like, he'd try and use things and word things to make me feel guilty so that I would. Yes, yeah, son, I really hate that you spent $275,000 on a fake girlfriend <laughs> and now I got nothing to retire on? You know, do everything that I can, like, get a job. Almost and, like a motivation. Right. Uh, and he'd, he'd tell me time and time again that, you know, you're her favorite. I mean, she would do anything for you. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's like, yeah, I don't need to hear that. I mean, that's not what would motivate me. Sure. Um, but, no, with Mom, I think we yelled at each other a grand total of, like, three or four times my whole life. Never any issues. I mean, she it was always, like, right. if there was somebody that I could talk to and, like, Cody wasn't available, I'd always talk to my mom. I'd always let her know what's going on. Um now, in characterizing all three relationships, guess what he's doing unwittingly? He's taking any kind of confrontation or justification. Well, it couldn't be a justification for triple homicide necessarily. But he's taking, you know, anything like that out of it. Yeah, I mean, she would help me out through through anything. Okay. Tell me about Dad. Dad. Uh, what, does he do? what does he do? Dad's a pharmacist. Okay. Uh, he works for CVS. He's been a pharmacist for, I think, 35 years or so. My dad was a very... And I spent every fucking dollar he had. <laughs> very, like, angry, violent type person. Overbearing. Overbearing. You know, like baseball. Gee, he's overbearing. You know what? It, it, it's funny because he's the victim in that, right? And I'm sure that's how he sees it. I'll practice and be like four or five hours and he's hurling the ball as fast as an adult can and we're like seventh to eighth grade trying to catch this stuff belittle you he would belittle me when i was younger the problem i guess was was that i was i was always like the, the jokester the one that could calm everybody down make everybody smile if it was a heated situation i could say a joke or something and then make everybody kind of move past it and i was just in the point where it's like you know, I'm hearing, you know, all this stuff from Dad. I'm seeing how much Cody's helping me. You know, Mom's stressed out with her job. And it's like I'm not doing anything. When's the last time your dad put his hands on you? Uh, the last time my dad put his hands on me would be... A lot of times the technique is to ask questions you already know the answer to. To trap the person or to see about the truthfulness of the, per of the interviewee's candor. I'd say kind of the middle of December of 2018. What happened? It's because, um, you know, with all the money that had been getting spent and... Just to be clear, the CAM model has not yet been brought up in the discussion. The money being spent, in this context, would simply be his living expenses. Uh, I guess just a mix of everything that I've been saying, just kind of boiling up in him. Um, and the fact that I was, to him, it seemed like I wasn't concerned about it. So, and then plus I was, you know, I wasn't acting like myself with the jovialness and, you know, sure. all that kind of stuff. Um, my father chose to admit me to like a like an, a depression or an addiction clinic or something like that in Fort Lauderdale called Cornerstone. Addiction for what? 
you know, I mean, when you're telling this story to somebody else, he's he's really leaving out this whole whole porn addiction and the fake girlfriend. One of the things that's very very difficult for people, especially people accused of uh, a sexual, you know, type of offense, is that they don't really want to be forthcoming about that because it's embarrassing. When was that? That was December 22nd. Okay. Until I think uh, January 4th. Did you agree to go? I, I didn't, but they said that, you know, this was your only... Who said? My dad. Okay. And that was in Fort Lauderdale? Yes. Yeah. Did your mom agree to it? Again, we're in Florida. <laughs> my mom and my brother both agreed, but... It was my dad who was like the iron fist, like, this is what's going to happen. Like, you know, he can't. Why did he say he needed to go? What was his reasoning? Because uh, with the way that I was acting, he just, he didn't see that I was doing anything for, like, the positive. Um, That doesn't make sense. So he's going to kick you out and send you to fucking treatment because you're just not acting positive? So he's, but this is how he sees it. You know, I mean, obviously he's masking the porn addiction thing because it's embarrassing and is whatever. And he's presenting himself in a light most favorable to himself, clearly. But when you really just listen to it, it, what he's saying just doesn't make sense. Um, You know, and a lot of it just came back to money uh, with him. Uh, He would he would like allow me to to spend money that he had, uh, like with his credit card or something like that. But. It's like then whenever I did, it was like a huge problem. Okay, so you had one of his credit cards. 275,000 problems that he gave his father. Yeah. And what were you buying with it? Uh, well, what I was doing is um, over the past four months or something like that, I've been, ta- I've been talking to this woman online. Who is she? Uh, she's as embarrassing as it is. She's a, she's a, cam, she's a cam model. A what? A cam model. Do you, right. do either of you guys know that? Nope. Uh, just, just like all the videos, just, you, have to, you have to tell us. A cam model, it's like they, they, it's like a virtual girlfriend, I guess you could say. Okay. Like that type of situation. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the money went to her. Okay. Where's she at? She lives in Bulgaria. She lives in Bulgaria. And so we have plans to meet up in uh, Bloomington, Illinois. You know, um... So we're an hour and ten minutes into it, and finally he's mentioning his sweetheart in Bulgaria. Where? Bulgaria? Where's that? It's over in Europe. It's like okay. outside of Germany. Okay. Like that. You ever been there? No. Okay. Um, so it, wasn't, it wasn't that serious. Okay. So what would you give her money for? Um, just for like the time online with her. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was just like that type of thing. And what did she charge? Six hundred dollars for like a like. 5,000 or something tokens or something like that. So so this is the shit that Andrew Tate does, you know, with the cam models and, and the um, webcam and that kind of crap. Preying on losers, you know. And let me tell you something. If you're one of those guys, you're not a loser. Go get your fucking hair cut. Get a new shirt. Smell good. All of a sudden, get upwardly mobile. Find a woman. There's a woman out there for everybody. You shouldn't be doing this, honestly. And then it was four hours a night, um, so I mean, it's, I mean, that's basically just where all the, like the costs went to. Was you pay real money for the tokens, then you use the company's digital currency for, okay. for that. So, so you do that. And when did you meet her? I met her um, at the beginning of July. Yeah, at the very beginning of July. Okay, and and still talking to her. Still, yeah. I mean, more just on, uh, like, Twitter, okay. like, just through direct messaging. Um, again, cell phone service doesn't work. Because I can't afford it now because I went through all my dad's savings, went through all the credit cards of my brother, and I just don't have the means to keep my virtual girlfriend online. It doesn't work, so it's like I can't use the, the chatting. Like How that. much do you think you spent on this? Because it seems kind of pricey. Yeah, probably close to... Like two hundred thousand dollars, I'd say. Two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And where'd the money come from? Money came from me, uh, my brother, and then my dad. Did they know where the money was going to? They didn't know that it was going to uh, a cam, a cam model. I, I was. Saying- 
this stuff happens slowly at first. You know, it's sort of like somebody who steals. You know, I'm gonna steal ten dollars and I'll put I'll put it back later, and then all of a sudden I'll just take another. And all of a sudden, before you know it, they've stolen a lot of money. This didn't happen quickly at first, but it just you know snowballed. I guarantee you, that's exactly how it happened. Saying that it was going towards my Twitch streaming, uh, like. Like, put, yeah, like advertising, like putting my name out there and that, that type of thing. So I guess to like bring it all back with why I was brought to Cornerstone, uh, it was a mix of all of those things. It's like he felt like, you know, I, um, he felt like... He needed to be grounded? Yeah, yeah. And so then I was there, you know, I spoke to like the therapist and psychiatrist and all that stuff. I didn't need any medications for anything. They had analyzed it as, this is an isolated event. You've been out of work. You have this PTSD. 200 grand on webcam models is not an isolated event. But notice how he kind of puts the professionals on his side of things. You know, the lens that he sees everything through is a narcissistic lens. PTSD from the whole getting arrested thing. And, I mean, the last thing on my record was, I think, a speeding ticket back when I was at UCF. They had signed me up, I think, to be there for 60 days, mm -hmm. but then I was only there until January 4th. So Who paid for that? My brother, Cody. What was the cost of that, do you know? 15000 So their final diagnosis of you was what? That I was fine. That I didn't need to be there. Oh, I'm fine. I got no problems. <laughs> you know, when all of a sudden your behavior is affecting at your relationship with everybody around you, I mean... You rip off your brother to the tune of sixty grand, and your dad to the tune of over two hundred thousand dollars. You don't think that's a fucking problem? And then treatment on top of that, fifteen thousand dollars. Of course, it's a problem. But he doesn't have any. He doesn't have a problem. And there are three people that are dead. Yeah, that I was. I was fine. I told them all about like my living situation and how it had been stressful, and then it got better, and then now it's just stressful again. But they had all just said that it was just this isolated just event. Situational PTSD from right. When I got back, that's where my dad started to get really kind of overbearing, and I mean rightfully so. I know what I did, but it's like with him, it was every single day, hours a day. <clears throat> excuse me, hours a day. He'd come home from work, and then he would just talk to me just about the same exact thing over and over and over and over and over again. God, it must have been so horrible for him to just hear about how shitty it is to have an online girlfriend when she really loved him. When was the last time that you and your dad did have, you know, a heated conversation? Uh, it would be Thursday? Thursday. Uh, because one of his rules was that I wasn't allowed to talk to the woman anymore that I had been talking to. Um, but I guess you could say behind the scenes, my mom would let me talk to her through her cell phone using Twitter. So yeah, anyways, on Thursday, he had apparently found out that I was speaking to her again. You know, it wasn't really my intention to continue talking to this woman, but it just kind of happened. Uh -huh. um, and then because there was like that emotional connection, I guess you could say, uh, between her and me, like I, I like, you know, it felt like, like, like a relationship, you know, I didn't want to just stop cold turkey on it. Well, yeah, you might offend her, you know, if she just all of a sudden, you know, she would think, oh, he doesn't like me. Oh, wait a second. She's manipulating you. So Thursday, you're home all day. Yes. With your mom. Like she works at home. Correct, yeah. Your dad's at work. What's his normal work hours? Uh, he works until... So you see how, how they, they start from the edges and then work their way in and sort of get him to... Uh, lay everything out, you know, so he doesn't have much wiggle room. It's pretty effective. I think he had to go in early that day because uh -huh. uh, he had to start, like, doing overtime or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he normally works, though, from, like, 5 or 6 in the morning to, I think he gets home between, like, 5.30 and 6 at night or something like that. What time did he get home that day? Uh, he got home at, like, 5.30. And then uh, he came in and then he asked me, in a calmer state, I guess you could say. Like, basically the, the leading question of, you know, why do you think we're about to have this conversation? Giving me, I guess, that opportunity to be honest and truthful to maybe tone it down a little bit. I, of course, did what I always did, where I kind of didn't admit to it. Uh -huh. um, 
And then... Addicts lie. Lie, lie, lie constantly. And it's frustrating. Because, especially if you're a father, like this. You know, you want to believe in your son. You want, to, you, you, want, you want tomorrow to be a better day than today for them. And so you believe what they say, but it's just so fucking frustrating. Because you know they're lying to you. And, 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 you know, this is money and, um, and a porn addiction and whatever. So it's not like his life is in jeopardy, like drugs. But still, it's trust, it's, it's compulsion, and he's, he's screwing up his life, really. And not, not being, moving forward. You think your behind's going to look good like this? You're damn right it will. With step one, they're amazing. They're amazing high-performance underwear. Am I wearing them now? You're damn right I am. I wear high-performance step ones when I'm in the courtroom, when I'm on the ski slopes, if I'm running. I, and, they, and here's the thing. They are made out of a viscose material derived from organic bamboo. So guess what that means? You don't sweat. They have a lycra panel in between your thighs so you don't chafe. No sweating. You got this pouch that nestles your goods the way it's supposed to. Let me just tell you something. You guys, you guys alone, if you guys order some of these at checkout, 25% discount when you enter in Bruce Rivers in the code, in the promo code. You have a 30-day guarantee, so if you don't like it within 30 days, you can send it back and get a full refund, but that isn't going to happen. Go on the link down below to 25% off, and you'll love them. Step one, get some. He, he came out and he told me that I've been doing that. He had proof. Yeah. Um, Have an argument? Yeah. He kind of, you know, pulled me up from the couch and then he was yelling at me to pack my shit up and just get out of the house. That he was the one who had to be the hammer and that, you know, why am I making him have to go through this and all this other kind of stuff. Okay. I had my argument and then I'm packing my stuff. I'm, you know, taking it out to the car. It took me like a couple hours to get as much as I could just kind of out into there. So I left. Okay. And then what time do you think you left about? Family! Oh my god. Oh, you threw a turkey at me! What's on the wire? Fuck you! Oh god. 9 or 9.30 or so. He goes on to state that he met up with his brother soon after on the side of the road. And what was the conversation? The conversation was basically that he was brought up to speed, you know, and that he would take care of it. He was brought up speed by what? This is Grant attempting to frame his brother for a double murder-suicide. You will see this quote brought up repeatedly from this point forward. He was brought up to speed on, like, why I'm, why I'm out here. Who brought him up to speed? My mom. Oh, so she talked to him? Yeah. He told you that mom had, had talked to him? Right. Do you think that's why Cody left work? According to Grant, Cody had left work a few hours early to meet up with him on the side of the road. Cody had indeed left work early, yet it wasn't to meet up with Grant. It was later proven that while Margaret Amato was sitting at the computer sipping on a glass of red wine, Grant shot her in the back of the head. He then lay in wait for his father to return to the house, then shot him twice in the head as he entered the kitchen. Cody then received a text from his father's number, asking him to come home urgently. Forensics believed that he was very likely pleading for his life soon after he entered the front door. He was found by police with a gunshot wound to the face, lying in the fetal position. His credit card was stolen, with a purchase made to a campsite for $600 and estimated 30 minutes later. I mean... Oh my God, let's just unpack that. First of all... Mom is there, and he blows her away. Then he lays in wait for Dad, and that's both... A, all this is premeditated, first-degree murder. And then, you know, he kills his brother, and it sounds like there, were, there was a struggle. I mean, he shot him in the fucking face. Ugh. But then, but then, he goes online and has a session with Sylvie. His sweetheart from Bulgaria. What does that tell you about the disconnected nature of this guy's brain? It's sociopathic is what it is. He didn't care one ounce about his family. He didn't care about his father losing all that money. He didn't care about anybody losing their lives. He only cared about... The interactions, you know, you know, in defeating his uh, amygdala, you know, with dopamine, you know, by having this online chat. I mean, that's really essentially what it is. 
is, you know, you're basically getting a high or this feeling of euphoria, um, and that's the only place you're going to get it. And you're going you're gonna to interrupt that, and, you know, because if, uh, if I'm not at home, I can't use your finances. I can't do this. I can't. So, I mean, so he eliminated everybody. And now let's, let's see how he tries to wiggle out of this with his narcissistic bullshit. In my mind, I was just thinking, oh, he had been let off work early like three, three times already this week. So 10, I was 10, just like... 10, 15 minutes you talk to Cody. Right. You have the conversation and he leaves to go home. Right. And you leave to go where? And then I stay in that general area just so that if anything happens, somebody like knows where I am. Yeah, I mean, I was staying in that general area, and then I decided to go to Publix. Publix. He just referred to the Publix supermarket parking lot. This is where he used the free Wi-Fi to log on to the campsite with his dead brother's credit card. Which was about what time? Like, between, like, midnight and 1, I think. Yeah. And you go to Publix midnight 1, and how long did you stay there until? I stayed there until, like, 7. Slept there last night? Talk to anybody? Uh, I just, I messaged the girl that I had been talking to so on Twitter. Talking, yeah. On Twitter, so you have to pay for it. Right, right. Did she respond back to you? Think about how diabolical that is. And just how a lack of connectedness to either any compassion for the people that he fucking killed, or even to the gravity of the situation. Because you just murdered three people, and now you're going to jerk off and talk to Sylvie from Bulgaria? How is that possible? It's just, what this guy's got a fucking screw loose. Uh, I think once... The discussion is then brought back to his last meeting with Cody. And then, when you left Cody, what did he say he was going to go do? Cody said that he will take care of it. Take care of what? Just the situation that was at hand, with whatever he had been updated with from my mom. Did he tell you what he was updated? He had told me that, he had told me the reason why, like, I had been kicked out. Um, but he really didn't give me that much dialogue, like, about that situation. You know, he was, he was miffed a little bit because, you know, he had just gotten off work and now he has to go deal with this. But what was your demeanor? Like, what did Cody see you as? Like, were you Like, scared. Upset? Yeah, you... like, so I was scared because, I mean, like I said, it's the first time that I had been out of the house. We've come and talked to you. You okay. rode up here voluntarily with us to talk to us. The detective will now initiate the first confrontation. Why do you think we're having this conversation? I honestly don't know, but I'm pretty freaked out at this point because, you know, it's, uh, I mean, I know, like, how the situation was when I left. You're now about to see the lead interrogator's attempt at getting Grant to confess in a manner so blatantly obvious that the suspect immediately sees through it. As a, as a child, we're told the truth always is the best thing to do, correct? Correct. You agree with me? Yeah. And accidents happen, and things in the heat of the moment, things happen that we wish hadn't happened, but we make... I, I do it myself sometimes. My kids will make me so aggravated, I'll snap at them and then walk away and say... Wow, I wish I would not have done that. That was not very adult of me to to snap at my child or something. Snapping at a child and murdering three people are quite different. Yes, they're wrong, but I should be the adult and not snap at them. Right. Tell me what you think, because I, I can tell by I've done this for a long, long time, and I read people the way they act and the way they, they talk to me and the way they answer questions. There's something you want to tell us. I can see it in your eyes, I can see it in your body language, and just your, the way you act. Now's the time. Now's the time if there's something you want to get off your chest and give us an explanation of what's bothering you. Now is the exact time to do it. And I, I, I'm giving you that opportunity um, right now to tell me some, something you want to get off your chest. It's there. I can see it in your face. I can see it in your eyes. You're upset about that night. You're upset about it. You're upset about it. You've been that... Since we've talked to you, I can see there's something been bothering you. Even though I don't know you from Adam's house, can't you see things in people that something's really bothering this guy? It's not that, you know, I spent a bunch of money I shouldn't have on this girl. So, now if you were to go to trial, this psychological analysis, you'd probably try to have it have it removed because, you know, the statement of the defendant comes into evidence. Although I don't ever remember hear them um, Mirandizing him. 
So if they if they didn't Mirandize him and he files a motion and he's not free to leave, then you can get it thrown out. But so if if the statement does come in, you know, all the psychological stuff that the cop is saying ahead of time probably is not coming in because his opinion about how the defendant is his behavior is not relevant and and actually it's speculation so be it you did it's over with money can be made back something's bothering you i'm just worried about what is all transpiring from this i I think at this point right now to be honest with you grant you know what it is um it's, it's in your eyes your, your eyes is, is, is the view to your soul, and it's, it's in your eyes. And He's got a face only a Bulgarian mother could love. It sounds stupid, and people don't believe it. Like I told you out there in the car, did I not tell you? You may not like what I say, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth every time, because I can walk in, walk in, in front of anybody in God and say, I don't care, I told him the truth. And we usually know answers before we ask it. I, I knew, we, me and, and Eva knew everything before before um, we asked you the questions. Now's the time to, to come to Jesus, be honest, because you're holding something back. I can see it in your eyes. People don't believe that the police will help you, but we are actually here to help you. With That's the biggest fucking lie in any interview you're ever going to hear, that we're here to help you. No, we're here to extract a confession so you go to prison for the rest of your life. That isn't going to help anybody. Except for maybe the general public, and <laughs> you get them off the street. <laughs> Issues you may have. Um, I think something happened, and you don't want to tell us, but right now is the time to get it off your chest. And I really wish you would, because it, it will make you feel better in the end. I I genuinely don't have anything else that I can say about the night or you know the the periods of time afterwards. There's only there's only one opportunity to make that that good impression and to if we've done something we shouldn't have done get that stuff that you get caught your hand in a cookie jar Detective Dan's approach here is so incredibly outdated and predictable that it actually seems to boost the suspect's confidence. It's the detective, in fact, who gives off a nervous disposition. He'll begin stumbling over his own words while simultaneously mixing up his analogies, which never made a great deal of sense to begin with. You, you, you do it. No. Is there anything else that happened at the house that you didn't tell us, that you've left out, but we haven't asked you, that would be of importance? Um. Or during the time that you drove around for those few hours? Did you ever really go back to the house that you haven't told us about? You'll also notice the female detective interject with something useful every now and then. But unfortunately, she's not the one leading this interrogation. That would be the detective who keeps bringing up Jesus to a guy who just murdered his family to go jerk off in a parking lot to a Bulgarian cam model. <laughs> to go jerk off in a parking lot to a Bulgarian... Uh, does that sound like a good afternoon? You know? I mean, I wonder if he has a cigarette with her afterwards. I know things that you don't know, and honesty will get you all the, the things I can do for you. Beyond, I can't deal with a, someone who lies to me, right. but I'll deal with someone and help them till the end, no matter what. Believe it or not, that's just me, and she'll tell you. That's just a crock of shit. I'll help you to the end. I mean, to what end? To the till you get to the fucking gas chamber. I'm very. It's, it's what it is. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to say if I can do something that can help you, I'm going to help you because every one of us make mistakes and do things we shouldn't have done in the heat of the moment to protect ourselves or to protect somebody else. It happens. Now's the time. Now, now is the time. So what do you think happened? To be honest. I think that there was something that obviously happened at the house. Tell me what happened. I don't know what happened. I know better. Listen to me. I know better. I can help you, Grant, with honesty. I can help you with honesty. We think something else happened before you left the home. So, j- just take that one statement. I can help you with honesty. How would you, as a detective, help me? It, it, it makes no sense. And Grant is, is, is bright. I mean, he's a smart person. And, and and really, it appears he can see th- right through this whole thing. 
that you're either afraid of or embarrassed to talk about. But we need to know exactly what happened because, like Danny said, we can place you there at certain times. And so we need to know what happened before you left that house because you didn't leave with everything being okay. I, I honestly, I don't, I don't have anything else that I can really say. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Do you even know why law enforcement got involved? Like what, what brought us to that home? No. Once you start telling me something that's truthful that I know, then we're going to have a conversation of exactly what happened. I mean, you're a smart guy. You know something's happened at your home. You have law enforcement here. You haven't heard or gotten any well, emails. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just scared as to what the answer is. Well, I you need to help yourself by filling in the blanks of what happened that night so we can give you the answer. Did anything more happen with you and your father besides him grabbing you up from the couch and yelling at you and kicking you out? Anything all, that at all? Did he pull, Did he harm you, hit you, No. draw no. any weapons on you? No, he didn't do anything like that. I mean, he was just yelling. This, this is the time to come to Jesus, to be honest. Because you know more. I'm looking in your eyes. Your eyes tell me exactly that you you are hurting inside. I get it. Brother, I get it. You're hurting. He ain't hurting. This guy went and jerked off in a parking lot to a Bulgarian supermodel. Or no, cam model. He's, he's sociopathic. And this is the You're only scared. time we can help you. Because once we get to a certain point, there's nothing I can do. It's, it's in the hands of who has it. Nothing I can do. Honesty is always the best policy. You get you ca get caught stealing a car, you admit to it. I did it. How can I get help? What can be done to help me? And let me tell you the rest of. You know, all right. You know, I murdered my dad, my mom, and my brother. Now, can you give me my help? I, I need help. <laughs> help with a clanging door therapy in prison for the rest of your natural born life. My story. And if back. something happened that you were defending yourself, then we need to know that. If you were protecting yourself because you were in fear, then that makes sense. But we need Yeah, my mom and dad threw my brother at me and I had to shoot all three of them. <laughs> Give me a fucking break. We need to know exactly what happened for you to protect yourself. You can't minimize this. Once, a, a wise man told me one time, once a, a, a bomb goes off, you can't defuse it. The detective's wise man friend was clearly a specialist in nuclear fusion, yet most people would already comprehend that a bomb can no longer be diffused once it has exploded. <laughs> it's already out there. Now is the point to say, how do I put band-aids on myself to minimize the, the, the injuries I have? And we're giving you that opportunity. I want to give you the opportunity. I don't think you're a bad guy at all. I really don't. The male detective will now for some reason focus on Grant's flaws and the overwhelming embarrassment of the cam girl situation, which is basically the exact opposite of what he should be doing. He seems to get confused about what he's trying to achieve here. He carries a sympathetic tone while essentially roasting the ever-loving shit out of the suspect. I think you're going through a very stressful and emotional time right now with being out of work and just dealing with all the problems with, with the arrest. You're probably not used to depending on somebody to pay all your bills. You know, you have to do mom and dad or have to, have to give you money. Cody's having to give you money. And there's a... No, he's used to all that shit. He's not used to uh, getting kicked out and being on his own and not having any more money to, uh, to fuck his online girlfriend with his hand. Significant debt to people. $200,000. I don't know what I'd do. If, I mean, mortgage, yeah, I get it. Or something like that. Or, or a medical bill for my child. Yeah, I get it. But talking to some girl, you know, in Bulgaria, you know... You, said, you, you hit it right on the head, you were embarrassed about it. And you have nothing to be embarrassed about. Here, here it is, man. Yes, you do. You have a lot to be embarrassed about. And it's shamed. I want to help you. She want to help you. You got you to gotta, you gotta come to me with the truth now. Because I, I already know the truth. There's a we, reason you didn't go back. I love it when cops say they already know the truth. Because if you already knew the truth and you already had the evidence of the truth, you wouldn't need my confession. To the house, there's a reason why you haven't tried to reach out. I mean, it's oh, wow. odd you haven't heard from anybody. Yeah, I mean, I must, I just, I don't, I, it's like it's words that, like, I can't think of to even say. 
Like, I, I just, I don't know how to even say the words. Well, what, what do you, give me a round about what you're thinking. That somebody in my family's dead. And how does that make you feel if you think, if you're thinking that? I have absolutely no ability to, to comprehend the words. Because, like I said, I've been there for my whole entire life. And even though there's been struggles and everything like that, there has never been any issues. There's never been the struggles or the issues like happened Thursday. Never for you. I, I believe you 100%. I believe it's never been like that. But something happened Thursday unlike anything you've ever experienced in 29 years of your life. Never. And maybe you felt that was rock bottom for you. You were getting kicked out of the house. Your father gave you an ultimatum. I mean, that's... The female detective will now carry out what the male detective was probably trying to do a few minutes ago. She will afford him justifications for the crime, making the gravity of admission less intimidating. You know, you're already dealing with the, the debt, and, you know, now you have to stop talking to this girl, and now you're being kicked out of the home. I mean, that's... I, I can understand how you would feel. I mean, that you'd want to lash out, or, you know, if something happened, you'd want to defend yourself. Sure. Absolutely. But we need to know what happened. I mean, I know, I can tell that you guys are, like, leading me into a certain way of what... The only thing we're leading you to is wanting to get the truth from you. I'm not trying to make you say something that's not true, that's not accurate. The truth. The end. That's it. That's all we want is the absolute truth. I genuinely don't have anything else that I can say about what transpired the, uh, during the nighttime. So when you left your house, everybody was fine. Yeah. And when you left Cody, everything was fine. One of the things, you know, if he had his cell phone or, you know, remember what I told you about our digital footprint? They know exactly where he was at all, at all times. Well, we got called to the house because Cody didn't show up to work. So law enforcement goes over there, and can you tell us what we found? No, the only thing that I was told was that Cody would take care of it for me. And that's all that I know. So if anything happened in the home to bring law enforcement there, what would you think happened? That there was a shooting. Between whom? That there was a shooting. You know, they could have been stabbed, they could have been poisoned, they could have, uh, the house could have burned down, but he specifically mentions a shooting. I don't know. Uh, between Cody and, and my dad. And why would you think that? To protect me, or to help me, or to do something with me. So you're telling me you did not shoot Cody, no. your father, or your mother? No. And he's not overwrought with emotion about this. I mean, he's a little concerned, but he's he's not crying because his parents are dead or his best friend and brother is dead. He's pretty calm. I mean, I don't know, like, what more I can say. Well, when law enforcement arrived, that's what they found. So you're the only outstanding child. You're the one that's been having problems with your dad. You're the one that we haven't been able to find for two days. Do you understand now why would we would be questioning you about this? Yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't, like. And the fact that he still has his brother's credit card so he can Bulgarian himself is illustrative. I mean, I wouldn't be saying like all, like, you, I don't know the, the way to say I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, like, what to even say. So if anything happened in the home, you believe it would be Cody and him? Yes. Because I was, I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't have, you know, access to anything. We know that Cody didn't shoot your dad. We know Cody didn't shoot your mom. We know Cody didn't shoot himself. 
There's something. And you still have an asset. The that's, condition that's, of them or anything. That's because I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't know what the normal proceedings are, but I don't, I mean, I... The normal proceedings are for you to be honest about we, what happened. And then we help you understand everything that's going, that's going, to, going on from here on, on out, of what our responsibilities are. And we don't believe you're being honest. We feel that you are leaving something out about what happened in that home. And the evidence tells us what happened in the home. But you need to fill in the blanks. This. Here's the thing. You've got a situation where I don't know at this point if they can connect all the dots. I mean, circumstantially, for sure. But whether there's any real direct evidence that he did this or that is another is another question. So that's why if he, if he wouldn't have sat down for this interview, maybe he had a chance, maybe he didn't. But it's a circumstantial case at best. Suspect's, Suspect's composure, composure was, was finally starting, starting to, slip. to slip. This was, this the, was perfect the perfect moment, moment to draw out the silence, silence to see how, to see how he how responded to the pressure. Here's my hand for honesty. I'm going to aim an honest guy. guy. I'm, I'm going to be honest. And when it's all said and done, I'm going to be honest at the very last minute. I'm going to be honest at the very last minute. To JCS's point, that silence can hang there. And, you know, the weight of it, you hear that? I mean, it, it, it can really get to somebody that's in an interrogation. Um, when this investigation continues, I'll go to the next person, to be honest with them. I can only do so much with honesty. Honesty, honesty, honesty. So what are you not telling us? Um, what happened at that home that you know? Did, did you leave the house with your brother Cody looking like that? Oh, pulling out the big guns, showing them the autopsy photos or the scene photos, probably the scene photos. Or did you leave the house with your father looking like that or your mother? Is that how you left your family? No. Nobody, nobody else went into that house. Who left your family like this? If you were the one that's been depressed, you were the one that owes money, you were the one that got into a confrontation with your father. Who did this to your family? If you were trying to defend yourself or something else happened, we need to know now. The female detective does an excellent job at affording him the option to admit to a lesser infraction, which in this case is self-defense. She provides the option while simultaneously building pressure. It's a textbook maneuver and she does it very well. To help you. So tell us what happened, Grant. We're here to listen to you. Grant, you need the truth. We're, we're here to make this right. You've got to tell the truth. It's on the tip of your tongue, my man. I get that. It's Did your tough. father go after you and you try to protect yourself? No, I didn't do any of this. Hey, I know. Video surveillance tells me everything that happened this night. I'm telling you. Of people that, that you'd be surprised who in your neighborhood has video. And I know that no, but there's only four people was at this house during this time. One, two, three, four. Tell me. You got to tell me, man. You got to tell me, because it will wind up later on that that you can't get any help from anybody. A lot of this, what people make decisions on, is honesty. Was somebody honest? Didn't fire a gun. Didn't fire a gun. Didn't fire a gun. None of them did. None of them did. Cody did not go. Or did your father point a gun at you? No, there's, there's nothing else that I can say. Your emotions, your demeanor, your body language, your eyes tell me everything I need to see. So at, at any point during an interrogation, you can, you can stop the interview. I mean, they can't beat a confession out of you. Lightly, if you're a cop and you haven't Mirandized them. Because you can have a situation where you come in voluntarily, and which is what he did. He came in voluntarily for an interview, confronted him at the hotel, and you heard it early on, so it's unclear as to whether he's in custody or not. But at some point, he becomes an in-custody person. And Miranda dictates that when you're in custody and there's interrogation going on, you have to be read your, your rights. And he certainly could end this at any time. Cody did not go or home. did your father point a gun at you? You want to tell me in the worst way. You want to get this, this pain off your chest. Do it. I mean, there's just, there's just nothing else that I can say. So your dad had told you in the past before that he would kill you? Right. 
for what reason. Oh, now that now that comes out. Notice that didn't come out initially. Or if I basically did anything related to this again, causing costing him a lot of money. And Cody knew about that. Right. So when did you learn that your family was dead? I had been worried since last night when I was uh, just in the hotel. Now, honestly, if he was really worried about that last night, he would have called, wouldn't you, called 911? Wouldn't there be missed calls to everybody trying to, you know, some frantic nature trying to get a hold of people? I guarantee you, when my son was on the run when he was younger, like he took off in the car, and I didn't know where the fuck he was, I was panicking, you know? And so calling his friends, calling here, you know, that's what people do. And he doesn't mention the fact that his dad uh, threatened to kill him, which is just bullshit. And he doesn't mention the fact that he was concerned that they were dead um, at the beginning of the interview. And then we're in th th almost three and a half hours into this interview, and now and now you're just concerned that they might have been dead. Oh, but I knew when you guys told me. I mean, like I knew when you guys had told me. You already knew, though. But I had... You already said... You knew. At any point, did you feel like you needed to reach out to Cody and see if he was okay, or...? I just didn't want to call him anywhere. I just didn't want to know. We understand your father was abusive, and we understand that he was the asshole. And if he threatened you, that he was going to kill you when you came back, you were probably in fear, were you not? So did your brother come home to try and defend you, and then this gunfight happened, and you got so scared that you left? This version of events would obviously clear Grant of any wrongdoing. The detective is hoping he takes the bait so that he changes his story, and can then be placed under arrest for lying to police. No, I mean, I, I, I left when I said that I left. I, I just don't know where else to go to get you to, to come around. got into shooting, we would know. We would know they shot each other. We'd know that. But why mom? And, and it's not always indicative, but one of the ways you can tell if somebody's fired a weapon is what? GSR, gunshot residue, testing on, on you know, whatever hand it happens to be, uh, that they're right-handed or left-handed. So... You know, and, and when, once they get to the scene, the medical examiner's office, puts, they put bags around the people's hands to preserve if there's anything on their hands. And she's right. Well, why mom? I mean, if mom was her his defender, why mom? I mean, like, never it's been before in your life. Never been here before in your life or your family's life. He's pissed. His future, his retirement, his plans are being upset by you because of the financial cost. I would almost bet this is just a horrible, bad incident that on any other day wouldn't happen. But you and me both know, as does she, what happened that night. I just, I, I don't, I don't have the answer for anything else. Okay. This, this is the last time before I'm going to walk out and then I'm done. Then I'm done for good. When I'm done, I'm done done. So what? <laughs> so you're done. But that's three and a half hours that they sat with this guy. I, mean, I just, I don't have anything else that I can say. Do you not feel bad for doing this to your family? I mean, I've been getting blamed for the last half a year for everything, and I... So no, I don't. They've given me all kinds of shit for... You know, I, I was just this close to proposing to my, my Bulgarian cam model, and they fucked it all up. I've been trying to move forward into a positive direction. Yeah, move forward in, in, in a positive direction while you're jerking off in a parking lot to your Bulgarian cam model. And every day I'm reminded of all the trouble that I had caused. 
and then I keep being told the same thing over and over again, but there's nothing that I can do to change it. Do you regret doing this to each one of your family members? I didn't do that to each one of them. Here, you, you sit in my seat for a minute. Sit in my seat. Get out of it here. Sit right here. Come here. Sit right here. Get out of that seat. Sit right there for me. The suspect still isn't sitting in his seat. Two things that happened here today. Two things. You're a guy swimming out in the middle of the ocean, and we're going to get... What the fuck? Why would he make him change chairs? I mean, is, is that a tactic? Uh, change the pressure on his ass or what? I don't get it. Now you're in an ocean? <laughs> what the fuck? I'll give you one of two things based on, based on you. You can have a life preserver to keep, to keep from drowning, or you get the boat anchor. Which one do you think is the boat anchor? The cops? The cops are the fucking boat anchor. They want to sink his ass. Which one do you want? Because we will give you whichever one you ask for. The life preserver, the boat anchor. I want the life preserver that I've said everything that I can. You, you want it, and I, I believe you do, but you have not said everything you, did, you can say. But there will be a time where you've asked for that life preserver. I can't give it to you. I can't. What does that even mean? I mean... I'll give you a pass on a triple homicide if you just come clean. I mean, what, is, what does a life preserver mean? It doesn't mean jack. Once I cross, once I cross a line, I got to step over. Can't do it. Won't do it. Think, think, think about that. I want to talk to her for a minute. Think, think about the, 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 the last life preserver I can give you. Think about it. Take a few minutes just to, to reflect on it, and then we'll come back to you in a couple of minutes, and then we'll go from there. And what happens is what happens. Fair enough? You alright, Grant? You okay? Need some food, some water? No, they've been there four hours. You good, you good to stay for a while longer? You okay? I'm not keeping here. You, if you want to stay, well, I'll, I'll talk to you till whatever, till you're you're happy with with everything and you're okay. Um, you're not detained. You're not being kept here. Don't want to be here. So he's not being detained. That, that means this interview is solid, and and they did not have to Mirandize him. So you didn't have to give him the Miranda warning before the interrogation because he was not in custody. You don't have to. Give me a minute, we'll get you out of here. What I'll do is uh, we'll get you up somewhere. I'll give you my card, my phone number. If you want to talk to me, you're more than welcome to call me. And uh, we'll move forward from there. Fair enough. Any questions of me before I go? Or before, before we walk like, out? I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Like what am I uh, like allowed to do? Live your life. Hey man, we are right there at it. Jason's here. It's going to be a few more minutes. What I need to do is just for, for our investigation, get some pictures of you. We're going to collect your clothing. As soon as that's done, we'll get Jason here to talk to you. Okay. All right. All right, so... Uh, so now we're six hours. I, I take it you know what happened. So now they're going to try to get Jason to get him to confess. It's a that's also a common tactic. I'm going to ask you plain out. You, you are not part of it in any way. No. How? When's the last time you saw everybody? Uh, I left the house between like uh, midnight and like twelve thirty. I want to believe you, Grant, but you're the last person that I could put in that house. And I know what happened over the last six months. Who else can I blame? Who? How are we going to find out who did this? I don't know. I don't have the answers. 
the shit you did, you could have been in jail. You would have been in jail for years. Talking about ripping his dad off. I mean, each one of those transactions that's over 500 bucks or $1,000 is a felony. How many felonies do you think that is? That's a lot. A lot. And they covered it up for you. I'm scared for you and I'm scared for myself and I don't feel comfortable with you being around me alone. I'm sorry. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> I could take you physically, but if you have a knife or know where a gun is, I'm fucked. I need you to be honest with me, man. I need to have closure. Well, I was told that you would not be have access to be able to contact this woman. Why do you feel the intent to still contact her? It was just the whole emotional thing. I mean, that's, that's okay. all that I can say. So are you saying that you love the woman? I feel like I did, yeah. Okay, you feel like you did, so you don't feel that way. You know, women in Bulgaria, especially if they're on the webcam, are very, very easy to fall in love with. You don't feel that way now? Well, I mean, now it's pretty much, you know, I mean, it's not what it used to be, is all I can say. <laughs> it's now that I've killed my financial source, it's really, you know, it just, it's a, the sparks just aren't there. Because she's aware of what has right. happened in the last several months. Right. It hurt, right? Yeah. Yeah, because you can't right. carry that persona that you carried before. I do love you, though. Just remember that. Just like Mom, Cody, and Dad loved you. Nobody loved you any more or any less. What a weak titted little motherfucker. I mean, he he shot his mother, shot his father, convinced his brother through his father's cell phone to come home, and then murdered his his brother. All for what? Rage over being kicked out of the house. Anything else you need to talk about before we let you go? Because mm -hmm. now's your time. You know that. Mm -hmm. Like Danny said, once you're out of here, you there's no coming back from this. We're giving you every opportunity to tell us what happened in that home that you have not told us. Mm -hmm. So you're aware that when you leave here, you're not going to have any chance. That's really not true. I mean, if he left and then all of a sudden called him, hey, I think I want to talk to you, you don't think they would talk to him? Of course they would. To redeem yourself and tell us the truth after the fact. I understand. And you're okay with that. You can live with yourself knowing that you're not going to tell us the truth. I understand what I can say. Okay. Now, they could hold him on the theft of funds because he admitted to, to doing that. You ready, man? Question for you. Question for you. You want to hurt yourself? You want to hurt anybody else? Let's do a self-talk. Okay. Come on, come on. Grant was arrested nine hours later at his hotel. His trial began on August 12, 2019. Grant Amato was so obsessed with this woman. You're going to see from the evidence in this case. At 2.53 a.m., on January, January 25th, after leaving the house that contained the three dead bodies of his family, the defendant goes to a nearby public parking lot, logs onto their Wi-Fi, and uses his dead brother's USA checking account to pay five hundred and ninety-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents <clears throat> to get onto Sylvie's website at three o two in the morning. That's what this case is about. 
It's, it's about, about his blind obsession with this woman. The end of the world, as he believed it to be, because of his family, and his absolute contempt for those that he held responsible. Verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first-degree premeditated murder. Grant Amato was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Think, think about that. Over what? Over an obsession uh, with, with a fake girlfriend. You know, that happens all the time for drugs. It happens for love. It happens, in this case, for a fake girlfriend. And, and what a waste. What an absolute waste. If you know anybody suffering from addiction, do two things. Get them help, but fucking protect yourself too. You know, you can only go so far. And if they're not willing to fix it or, and get the help that they need, you've got to protect yourself. You know, this I just feel awful for this family. But, um, and I don't really feel that bad for Grant. Grant is uh, just fucked up. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. So, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys a lot. I mean, we get so many great notes, you know, and comments and sending us stuff. We just really appreciate all the uh, support. So make sure you subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, and we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. And another shout out to JCS for another banger. Make sure you give him some love too. See you next time here on Criminal Lawyer React. I'm part of Bruce Rivers is broke, that your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers is broke, that your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23 hour lockdown, please is that my god.